communication with him. And it's dear, it's dear to me. We have one of the mother, one of the But we have another one. It, it's dear to me. And uh, it's dear sister. She, she, uh, she didn't, she don't, she don't want it, she don't really want it. And I, and, I, and I know that because she had expressed to me the, the thing that she's done uh, for the ministry. She didn't want uh, credit for it or whatever, but the Bible said to me that, that credit must be given for credit. And so this is for her to be assistant this morning. And, uh, a lot of us don't understand. We started out on this journey in 2020. And, uh, in February of 2020. And the very next month of March, we ran right into COVID, boom. And it was shut down, everything was shut down. And, uh, we, were, we were driving to, uh, to read it. A lot of times it was just my wife and I.
presented to you to see uh, We thank you for your, your fellowship, prayer, and your support to the ministry. Uh, and so we want to give you this, this plan of God of our heart and appreciation for your support and all that you have done and effort to keep uh, we pray that the Lord will keep you encouraged. We pray that the Lord will keep you encouraged. And that you would stay encouraged and continue to uh, continue to hear, continue to be sensitive to the uh, Worship the Lord. She said, that is, she said, that is my service. That's how that's my ministry. That's how I want to bless the man. We say, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh so I mean, so well, so be aware of that. We appreciate it. We definitely appreciate it. And um, and I almost I said, you know what I want to take it to how the some said, no, wait a minute. I didn't want you to, I didn't, I didn't, what I did want you to think is that I, I was trying to pressure you into coming to church. I didn't want you to think that. So I almost said, you know what, I'm just going to take it to her and, and get this out of the way. And by the time I uh, thought against that and kind of let it go, uh, I didn't even know you was coming today. So we, got, we got in the car and got ready to leave. My wife said, oh, we got a text from the city. It says you get in church today. I said, oh. So it's a good thing I, I kept it with me in my bag. I said, yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do that. And, uh, and so we thank God for that. Now, y'all got to give me 40 minutes. Y'all got to give me 40 minutes. And, uh, and 40 minutes and pray for me. And we're going we gonna, to uh, we gonna try to encourage you in the word this morning. Because uh, the number one objective for the body of Christ in this day and time is to be ready when the Lord comes. I know you may hear a lot of things concerning the church, but the number one objective for the church, the, the number one objective for the body of Christ at this particular day and time is to be ready when Jesus returns, period. All, the, all, the, all these other things are somewhat of a distraction. Remember we, earlier we were talking about that adversary. If you don't know what an adversary is, please, please don't fall into the Hollywood image of a red suit, big horn, and a long tail, or a monster. Uh, please don't fall into that. An adversary is anything or anything or anyone or whatever that is against you. That's an ad that's your adversary. And so it, your adversary may smile at you. Your adversary may be your adversary may have the best intentions. But if it's against your eternal soul, it's an adversary. And so don't fall for the Hollywood image. Say, well, I'm gonna wait and see some big monster come and scare me half to death. No. And, uh, if you remember the word of God, Jesus said, Did not pick 12 of you, and one of you was the devil. And Jesus knew it all the time that Judas, Jesus knew it all the time that Judas was gonna betray him. He knew that Judas was his adversary all the time, but you see, he made no difference in between his disciples. Is he making a difference with your enemy? Mm -hmm. Message. Right. Bible says you love your enemy. Right. Jesus loved Judas just as much as he loved Peter. He showed no difference because God is not a respecter of person. So if you got it if you got a known enemy and you treat him different, my advice to you today is to repent. Repent, ask the Lord to forgive you. Treat him right. He 
He said, by doing that, he said, if your enemy is hungry, he said, feed him. If your enemy is thirsty, he said, give him a drink of water. He said, by doing that, he keep cold the fire on his head. Amen. That's the only way you're going to gain him if you love him. If you, if you give him that same energy back, you'll never gain him. And our whole objective as children of God is to glorify God, to, to gain or influence souls to Christ. But anyway, let me, that's not what we're dealing with today. But, you know, you got to go with the Spirit. You got to go with the Spirit. And so we're still, uh, and once again, we thank God for each and every one of you. So, you know, because we got the love of God, we don't get jealous, upset, or envious. We don't do that. And so uh, we are still in the book of Galatians. We're still dealing with our great Apostle Paul to the church, uh, to the church, to the church of the Gentiles, or who, who whatever, non-Jewish or non-Israelite, non-Israel, Gentile, whatever other nation is not Israel. Paul was Paul is our minister to the church today. You remember the Damascus Road experience when the Lord met him. Told him that he had a lot of great things. He had a lot of things that he had to suffer for Christ's sake. And so this is one of the things he had to suffer. He was over the church. And so we are in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. We have just slid down a little bit to the 16th to the 18th verse this morning. And, uh, I'll be reading the King James Version this morning only, as, as an custom. You follow along in whatever translation you need. It is, it's, on, it's on the screen if you're able to view it. It's also on your worksheet. And uh, so we'll get into it. We've got about 30, 35 minutes to get into it. And we'll try to get in and out of here. Uh, the 16th verse says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary. We talk about that, mm -hmm. These are contrary. Some of them don't know what they have as very uh, operating. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the thing that you would, 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Be gracious to heaven, Father, in the precious name of you. We come this morning. Thank you once again. We can send the mercy and kindness, Lord. We thank you for the favor, Lord. We thank you for granting mercy for waking us this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your favor. We pray that you move in this place this morning according to your will, according to our needs. We thank you, pray for the Lord, Father, in Jesus' name. For well, thought this morning, our thought this morning comes out of the 18th verse, where it said, if ye be led of the Spirit, if ye be led of the Spirit. This is Paul. He said, if ye be led of the Spirit, then it concludes with, ye are not under the law. If ye be led of the Spirit, then ye are not under the law. And so, That word led, as it pertains to this lesson this morning, that word led is, is guide, shepherd. It is to show someone or something the way to a destination by going in front of or beside them. Say that again. That word led this morning in our text says, suggests guide, shepherd, show someone or something the way to a destination by going in front of or beside them. And that word law, that word law in our lesson this morning suggests to us statute, command, decree, precept, legislation, Covenant, and our last lesson, I believe, that we 
discover is the yoke of bondage, and it's the strength of sin, the law. And so, going back to our focus, verse, the 18th verse, he said, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. If ye, if, if you and I are guided, or you and I are shepherded by the Spirit, he said, then ye are not under the law. The law being the yoke of bondage, the law being the strength of sin, the law being uh, statute, commands, decree, precepts, legislation, covenant. The law in all these attributes is all these things. But he's telling you now that if we are led, if we're guided or if we're shepherded of the Spirit, then we are not under the law. Now, Paul, you understand, Paul is talking to the church in Galatians. He's talking to the body of Christ. And so, the 16th verse says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 17. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. A lot of us, a lot of us haven't grasped the understanding that uh, our, our adversary uh, is synonymous with our flesh, dwells in our flesh, dwells in our flesh. And when you understand what flesh is, I know. Uh, we, we, I know flesh is skin and bones and, and, and this type of stuff. I understand that. I understand that. But when the scripture, when the scripture talks about flesh, the scripture is talking about yours and, and my, our human nature. It's our human nature that wars against the spirit of God. Take my time because y'all got to give me about 30 minutes. So when you see the word flesh in the text, we all we all are flesh and blood. We all are flesh and blood. But this is why Paul is so adamant about you and I being led of the spirit. Because if we are led of the flesh, then we are led by a force that is contrary to the spirit of God. It opposes God. It is enmity to God. It is hostile against God. This is why the Bible said, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You got to hear what the Spirit is saying. This is why the church is a body of baptized believers. We are, we are people that have been quickened by the Spirit of God. We have been baptized by the Spirit of God. This is what makes Amen. You and I are a member of the body. It is the Spirit of God. It is the same principle as DNA. DNA is what determines that you are a biological child. The DNA. Now you can adopt. You can adopt the family down the street if you want, Charlie. That's my mom and dad down there. Because of the love they show you and the favor they give you, and this and that and the other. But if you check the DNA, your biological parents are down here, so to speak. This is the same thing with the this is the same thing with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the DNA evidence that you and I are children of God. We are we are all we are all the creation of God. God created us all. But those of us, those of us that have the Spirit of God. We are the redeemed of the Lord. Every, everyone, God has created us all. He has created us all, and He and, and there is no respect to a person with God. None whatsoever. But it takes the spirit of God, just as it takes the DNA to determine your biological. 
It takes the Holy Ghost. It takes the baptism of the Spirit in order to make you and I uh, a child of God. Why? Because Paul is letting the Galatians know. He said, look, you have to be led of the Spirit. You have to be guided. You have to be shepherded. You have to, you have to uh, allow the Spirit, it says, to show the way to a destination by going in front of or beside you. Now, when you understand what the Holy Ghost is, the Bible said the Holy Ghost, which is the Comforter, whom the Father will send in my name, send in Jesus' name. And it said it will go, it will go, it will show you, it will bring you into all truth, into all righteousness. Now when you look into that, it speaks to the paraclete or paracletus, which is, which means something that goes alongside with you. He said the Holy Ghost he said the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. In other words, the Holy Ghost comforts. It's the spirit of comfort, and it goes alongside you and I. This is how and why when you go through things in life, and uh, this, the Holy Ghost, it comforts you. Why, why most people probably don't understand why you're so composed, Despite what you're going through, you have to understand because it's the Spirit. Because I'm shepherded by the Spirit, because I'm guided by the Spirit. And the Spirit of God is never unseemly. The Spirit of God is never unruly. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So when I try to justify an unruly or unseemly behavior or characteristic, guess what? That's that flesh he was talking about. That's war against you keeping your repose. You got to hear what the Spirit said to the church. Yeah. If you're led of the Spirit, he said, then you're not under the law. Now, we've got to understand what the law is. So in, 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 uh, in parentheses, it, it has 1 Corinthians 15 and 56. Let's go by there. Y'all give me 25 minutes and we're going we to get out of here. Take your time. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 56. 1 Corinthians 15, 56. And then we'll go to Romans 3 and 20. 1 Corinthians 15, 56 says, it says this. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is what? The law. If you are led of the Spirit, he said, then you are not under what? You are not under law. You are not under the strength or the power of sin. I got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Listen, he says, uh, the sting of death is sin. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. <laughs> but the gift of the spirit of what? Eternal life. Hear what the spirit is saying. He's saying, look, the, the, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. In other words, all, all, all the law did, all the law did was legis legislate death. The law was, the law, the Bible said the law was instituted because of Israel's transgression. The law was never instituted to save. Salvation has always come by the promise, the promise that God made to Abraham years ago. And we are just to fulfill them. But God instituted the law because of Israel's transgression. So what he is telling you and I is that as long as we are walking in the flesh, as long as we are walking in the flesh, we are walking in the strength of sin. We are walking in the strength of death. We are walking in the strength of the law. Because the law is legislation. The law is a covenant. The law always is a statute. It's a decree. And when you are under those legislations, and when you are under that decree, 
the sting of sin and death. I'm trying not to go there because I'm excited. When you understand, when you understand what Jesus did for you and I in the death, burial, and resurrection, I'm trying to hold my preacher back. I feel it. I'm trying to hold it back. But when you understand what Jesus has done for you and I, then you understand you don't have time to deal with a lot of other stuff. Come on now. You don't have time to deal with a lot of other stuff because you were trying to be led of the Spirit. You were trying to be shepherded or guided by the Spirit. And the first thing the Spirit would tell you is that uh, you don't uh, render evil for evil. You've got to overcome evil with good. The Bible said the Lord is the avenger of evil. He said, I will be paid in due time. And so when you understand what is required of you or not, then we have to be guided by the Spirit. We have to be shepherded by the Spirit. And you have to allow the Lord to fight your battles. Because we have, because we have such a great promise in the Spirit of God. Because we have such a great authority in the Spirit of God. You have and great adversary. This is why he tells you don't, don't walk in the flesh. Don't walk in the flesh because it's contrary to the spirit. Yeah. It wars against the spirit. And you have to understand what the flesh is. We, we, we explain the flesh is our human nature. This is why the Bible says we must be born again. We have to be born again, born in spirit. Understand, if you ever, if you ever in doubt, give me about 30, 20 minutes, if you ever in doubt, go off, always go back to crea creation account. Because God formed Adam from the dust of the ground. And Adam stood there upright before God formed. But the Bible said Adam didn't become a living soul until God breathed his, his, the breath of life into his nostril. We gotta hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. It is not until we become filled with the Spirit are we a living soul. Understand the, the strength of sin is death. We just read that. So long as I'm standing here in my flesh, long as I'm standing upright in my flesh, I'm under the legislation of the law. I'm under the strength of sin, which is the sting of death. You gotta hear what the Spirit is saying. This is why it's so important to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And if you are part of a ministry that don't even teach or don't even believe in the Spirit of God, my advice to you is flee quick. Because all you have there is a social club. All you're doing is gathering. You have to understand what the Spirit of the Lord is, the Bible said there in liberty. It said when it comes to the Lord, He is that Spirit. And what the spirit of the Lord is, their liberty. What is liberty? Liberty is, is power and dominion over sin. It is power and dominion over the sting or the strength of death. He has liberated us by the death, the burial, and the resurrection gave us power and dominion over sin. Gave us power and dominion over flesh. We are not, we are no longer under the, the legislation of the law or the flesh. Got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Calm down, preacher. I, I know you man, but mm. you got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. This is why Paul is telling the Galatians. He said, "Look, ye, if ye are led of the Spirit, if ye are guided of the Spirit, he said, ye are not under the law." Let us go to Romans three twenty, and, and, and then we'll get into the lesson. Let us go to Romans three twenty before. I take out. The bishop always said that after you you start exalting, it is hard to come back and instruct. So if 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 I take off, let me get this all in first. Because if after I take off, it's hard to come back and instruct. Amen. Romans 3 20 says it like this. Romans 3 20 says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. By the knowledge, what do you say? By the, for by the law, for by the law, for by the legislation, for by the statute, for by the command, by, by, by the law 
is the what? Is the knowledge. Is the knowledge of sin. He said, but if ye be led of the Holy Ghost, he said, then ye are not under the law. And the Holy Ghost can lead and guide you to all truth and righteousness. The Holy Ghost can lead you around sin. The Holy Ghost can give you power and dominion over your hands. Those that are out, your adversary that is out to get you. The Holy Ghost can lead you and guide you away from that. This is why Jesus told his disciples when he prayed. He said, lead us not into temptation. He said, but deliver us from the evil. You got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. When you understand that God sent his words to save you and I, then you have to understand that God is not pleased with you and I living according to our emotions. You and I living according to our feelings. You got to understand what the flesh is. This is the flesh. Flesh is your human nature. Uh, God gave us these senses uh, and these feelings uh, and these emotions uh, so we can maneuver on earth. Uh, but he never gave it to us uh, but we can try to offer it back to him. God don't want your emotions. Uh, he wants your faithfulness. Uh, God don't want your feelings. Uh, he wants your dedication to his word. Uh, God don't want you to read his word and then say, well, you know what I think. Uh, he didn't ask you what, he, what you think. Uh, he's looking for you to be faithful to his word. Uh, and if you are led of the Holy Ghost, uh, then he can guide you. Uh, and he can shepherd you. Uh, and he can take you to your destination. Uh, either in front of you uh, or, or else walking alongside you. Uh, and he can compel you to keep going uh, when your time, when times get a little rough uh, and you become overwhelmed. Uh, it's the Spirit of God that compels you to keep going uh, when you feel like giving up uh, and you just don't know what to do. Uh, it's the Spirit of God that guides you and tells you uh, you can make it. Uh, keep on trying. Uh, the Bible was said like this. Uh, he would say, stand still uh, and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, Understand when you stand still uh, and when you wait on God, uh, he said, I will strengthen your heart. Uh, he said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Uh, God can give you the strength. Uh, although the enemy is camped all about you uh, and all those things may be against you, uh, but if you wait on the Lord, uh, he said, they that wait on the Lord, uh, he said, they shall renew their strength. Uh, he said, they shall mount up with wings as you got to hear what the Spirit is saying. Uh, so if you want strength, uh, wait on God. Uh, if you want strength, uh, be led of the Spirit of God. You got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Uh, this is why the Lord gave you and I the Holy Ghost. Uh, he said in Acts 1 and 8, uh, He said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Uh, he said, "Ye shall be witnesses unto me, Jerusalem, and Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost ends of the world." Uh, this is what the power of the Holy Ghost does. Uh, it guides you, it leads you, uh, it protects you, it comforts you, uh, it steals your salvation, uh, it'll take you through uh, everything that you have to endure in this life. Uh, and you have to understand this life is not going to be easy. Uh, because of our adversary. And a lot of us don't realize how close our adversary is. Our adversary is just as close as the way we think. The Bible said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And if your thoughts are negative, you become an adversary to yourself. Because God has said you can. And sometimes we have the audacity to say, well, I don't think. What do you mean you don't think? God has said you can. Thanks be to God who always gives us the victory in Jesus Christ. We triumph over Jesus simply because Jesus triumphed. Let me go. Let me go. Y'all give me 10, 11 minutes. In, in the Gospel of John, the 16th chapter and the 13th verse, he said, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, 
is come. He will guide you into all truth. Uh, for he shall not speak of himself, uh, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. <laughs> and, he, and he will show you things to come. Uh, you have to understand, if you are not guided of the Holy Ghost, uh, if you're not shepherded by the Holy Ghost, uh, you have to understand even in the natural uh, what a shepherd's job is. Uh, a shepherd's job in the natural uh, is to move the sheep uh, according to the pasture. Uh, right. And once you've eaten everything there that is good for you to eat, uh, it is the shepherd's job to move you to the next place. Uh, the scripture said he will lead you, uh, he will guide you, he will shepherd you. Uh, this function comes by the Holy Ghost. Uh, it doesn't come by our cognitive thinking. Uh, this, this movement comes by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, because he will guide you. Uh, he, will, he will shepherd you. Uh, you have to understand how our relationship with God is. Uh, our relationship with God is not because of our intelligence. Why? What do you mean? Because God is omnipotent. And you and I are very limited. God is omnipotent. He's all-knowing. The Bible says he knows our thoughts from afar off before we even think of it. And God is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere at the same time. You are not there until you get there. But God is already there. So if you are led of the Spirit, you've got to hear what he's saying. He's saying, I can move you through here. I can guide you through here. I can direct you through here. He said, yeah, you're going to see some hard stuff. He said, yeah, you're going to go through some hard times. But this is why the Bible said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. You've got to keep your faith in God. You've got to understand that God, by faith, in other words, by the function of the Spirit, by the guiding of the Spirit, He can lead and guide you. Uh -oh. Romans 6, 14, let's go. I got about nine minutes. Romans 6, 14 says this. He said, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law. He said, But you are under grace. Grace is another spiritual function, because grace is the unmerited love and favor of God. You and I would never merit salvation. So don't let nobody think you, don't let nobody make you believe that you are less than, because you don't have all the accolades or the accomplishments that they have. But let them know that I've got the grace of God. So as long as I've got the grace of God, then I've got the favor of God on my life. Then I've got the love of God on my life. And he's going to lead and guide and shepherd me uh, unto eternal life. Uh, Jesus said the enemy comes uh, not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. Uh, he said, but I have come uh, that you might have life uh, and life more abundantly. Uh, you got to understand what the abundant life is. Uh, the abundant life is in the spirit of God uh, because it is the grace of God. Uh, the, uh, Paul told the Romans in 6.14, he said, For sin shall not have dominion over you. Uh, you've got to understand uh, that sin has, has no more, that the power of sin is destroyed in the spirit of God. Uh, you've got to hear what the spirit is saying through the church. Uh, but there's so many ministries uh, and there's so many assemblies uh, that don't even touch the spirit of God. Uh, you're not, in other words, you understand you're living beneath your privilege. The power of God is in the spirit of God. And, and, and sin has no more power in dominion over you if you are guided or shepherded by the spirit of God. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, then you're staring, you're standing there. Your life consists of you warring with your flesh. The life is, your life consists of you arguing with your flesh. The, your life consists of, well, but no, you got power over that through the Spirit. You can tell your flesh, get behind me. You have no power and dominion over me. For Christ I will live, and for Christ I will die. I will do the things that God has required in His Word. 
you got to understand. Romans, let's go over to Romans 7 and 4. Uh, Romans 7 and 4 says it like this. Uh, he said, Wherefore, my brethren, uh, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Look at that. Uh, you have to understand, first of all, uh, first of all, you have to understand, you got to understand uh, the law of marriage. You got to understand. The law of, of the husband and wife. You got to understand that law before you understand this. Uh, and the Bible said that a wife is bound to her husband. This is the this is the law of the husband and wife. The wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. Yes. This is why your vow says to death do you part. Okay. Now, but if your husband be dead. Then the wife is no more under that law. And she is free to marry again. Vice versa. If the wife is dead, then the husband is not under that law. And he is free to marry again. But as long as they live, as long as they're married, as long as they live, they're under that law. You got to hear what the Spirit is saying. Now check this out. Romans 7 and 14 says, Look, wherefore, my brother, ye also are become dead. Through the law. Why? By the body of Christ. Why? Because Christ died in the body. And when Christ died in the body, he died through the law of sin. Therefore, liberating you and I that we could be married to Jesus. He died for you and I that we are no longer under that law. Let me read it again. He said, Wherefore, my brethren, he also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ that ye should be married to another even to him who is raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto God by the death, burial, and the resurrection this is why if your church don't preach the gospel if your church lacks the power of God because Christ Jesus died to the, to the law of sin he died to the bondage of sin he died to the stain of sin. He died to the power of the law. You got to hear what the Spirit has said to the church. And we are free to be married to Jesus. We have life in Jesus Christ. Therefore, he said, we bring forth fruit unto God. Woo, y'all got to give me about four minutes. I, I feel my preaching, but I'm holding back. You got to hear, I get excited about the Word of God. Study the Word of God, read the Word of God, and understand that the Lord sent His Word for our life, for our our eternal life. You got to understand. You got to understand these false teachers, these false ministries, these false bishops, these false evangelists, these false prophets. A lot of us are are are, 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 are taken in by the titles, the names. That doesn't mean nothing. That is that is the operation of the flesh. <sighs> listen, listen. All of us, all of us are old enough to, to have jobs and work. Even those of us that go to school. You you are part of an organization. The school is an organization. Our jobs are corp corporations or organizations, or whatever. Listen. And in those organizations or corporations, you can climb the ladder. So. But that's only in that organization. If you step outside of that organization, then what? You got to say, it don't mean nothing when you go to somewhere else. They may acknowledge you with whatever, but you're going to have to start again. Right. Here was the spirit said to you. In an organization, yeah, according to the organization, we can climb up and be double bishops and two, three bishops and all that type of stuff. That is that organization. That is not this. This is no respect to the person. This is not a title. This is simple obedience. If you simply obey the word of God, then heaven, eternal life is yours. You, you, you can't go to God in your flesh and say, look, God, I'm devil, triple, golden bishop, this. He's going to say, what is that? 
What is that? <laughs> You're going to say, what is that? That was according to your organization. I didn't make that organization. I sent Jesus Christ to preach the kingdom of God. Just because you join yourself to an organization, that don't mean you. No, no. This is how you're going to get to me. This is how you're going to uh, come on up with me. You're not going to come up because you're part of some fortune, 500,000, whatever. That, you, you, may, you may accomplish it, you may prosper in that, if you do it according to that criteria. But this is my criteria right here. If you are not led of the spirit, then you are led of the flesh. And guess what? No flesh and blood will inherit the kingdom of God. Romans, Romans 8 and 2 and 14. Listen. Romans 8 oh Lord, we may have to cut it after the next one. I'm, 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 I'm going to give you all that. Romans 8 and 2 said, Romans, we're going to do Romans 8 and 2. And 14, and then we're going to do Galatians 22 and 23, and then we'll give it up. Romans 8 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of what? Amen. Now, you don't believe in the Holy Ghost? Your ministry don't even teach the Spirit? The law, listen, he said, The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from not your works. <laughs> Lord help us. I wish I wish I, I wish I had more time. <laughs> Listen, for the law of the spirit, this this is why you have to understand what grace is. This is why you can't let people make you feel bad. Because you are not a comp well accomplished. We are all saved by the grace of God. Even slave. It is the law of the spirit. The Bible said not by works. Lest any man should boast. It is by the grace of God. It is because God had favor on you and I. That he sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish but have everlasting life. He said, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You and I will never save ourselves by our own works. If you don't believe it, go back to creation account. And when Adam and Eve fell in the garden and they realized they had sinned, they hid themselves. And the Lord said, who told you you were naked? And they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. You can never cover yourself. What did the Lord do? The Lord took the fig leaves off of them. Because you can never cover yourself. The Lord sacrificed an animal. The blood had to be shed when sin is there. He sacrificed that animal and he covered them with the sin, the skin. We have never been able to cover ourselves. You're not going to start it today. The Bible said, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Not our works. Mm -hmm. Jump down to verse 14. He said, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, he said, they are the what? They are the sons of God. As many that are led by the spirit of God, he said, they are the sons of God. Mm. There's a lot of false teachers out there. There's a lot of false religions and a lot of false denominations. They tell you to repeat after the preacher and they tell you, okay, go ahead and say it. I ain't read that in the scriptures yet. But that's them. My job is to teach the truth. And your job is to believe it by faith or not. The preacher, even if he even your most favorite bishop with all the titles, titles that are circling, circling, three hundred sixty three. All he can do is preach and teach the word. He cannot take away your God-given choice to believe it or not. The Bible said, "He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned." So, 
I preach the word, your job is to believe it or not. And we can't cross the line, I can't make you believe it. Anyway, last one, these last two of them, and I'm going to give y'all up. Uh, thanks. Thanks for your patience this morning. Galatians, still in the fifth chapter, listen, verse 22, 23, listen to what he said. But the fruit of the what? Is what? Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. 20, verse 23 says what? Meaning, temper. Okay, hold on. Let's read this together. What, what, what does the conclusion say? Gentleness. 
He said, they that worship him, got to worship him how? In spirit and in truth. You, you, we, are, we are unjustifiable if, if, if we are if we're not gentle, if we are aggressive, that's not the spirit of God. God is, God is, God is a humble spirit. God is not an aggressive spirit. God is not a forceful spirit. God is a spirit that will own suffer. If you don't understand God, then he sent you his very image. Who? Jesus Christ. Jesus was long suffering. He was gentle. He said, did not choose 12 of y'all and one of y'all was the devil. I knew you was going to betray me. And I never treated you differently. And when the time comes, he said, look, go do what you have to do quickly. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Gentle. Goodness. Uh-oh. That's the other thing. Faith. Faith. Here we go. Because everybody says, oh, I got faith. Do you really? <laughs> do you really have faith? Do you really have faith? What is faith? The Spirit said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. That's, that's Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is expectation. Where is your expectation? Is your expectation in the flesh? Or is your expectation in the spirit? Where is your hope? The Bible said if we only hope in Christ in this life, then we are all men most miserable. If our expectation is not beyond this life, then we are all men most miserable. Because we have an eternal hope. We have an eternal expectation. Although the Bible said it, it, there may be a lot of things in this life that uh, we may not discover, or, or we may not come, or, or we may not reveal, or we may not discover, or we may not receive, or whatever. But if we only hope in Christ in this life, he said, then we're all getting most perfect. Because our hope is beyond this life. We are, we are only pilgrims in through here. We're only we're old enough to know, we're old enough to have gone to funeral to know that this is not the destination. So if our hope is only in this life, we said, then are we all being most miserable? Because our hope is eternal, I can long suffer. Because our hope, expectation is eternal, I can be gentle. I don't, we, I, we don't have to fight, brother. Then he said, meekness. And here go a good one. <laughs> Temperance. I'm gonna, and, I, and I'm going to let y'all go. Temperance. Because I say that one more time, I'll be lying. <laughs> then, then he said temperance. And if you don't know what temperance means, I'm about to tell you. Temperance is self-control. Temperance is sound mind. Self-control. Now, understand. Rehearse this again. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him how? In spirit and in truth. The fruit of the spirit, the offspring of God, is all these things that we just said plus more, but this is all this thing. And and then and then he said temperance. Temperance. Then he said temperance. Temperance is self-control. Temperance is, 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 is sound mind. Sound mind is self-control. The Spirit of God is never unruly. It doesn't matter the situation. You can't justify being unseemly, unruly, because the Spirit is temperance. Mm, you got to hear what the Spirit is saying. So while you're going to a church that encourages you to go get 10 cars and 10 houses, you, you're being misled. You're being misled. The power is in the spirit, in the Holy Ghost. The Bible said the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. Kingdom of God is not corner or the 
worship is not, it is not those things. It is becoming an offspring of God. It, it is worshiping God in spirit and in truth. He said, yeah, as it is all, I got the next door on the line. As it is always, we encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Now, now the Lord will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Except the man is born again of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's the Gospel of John, third chapter. Read the first 18, 19 verse. John 3 and 3, John 3 and 5, John 3 and 7, where Jesus declares unto many demons, we've got to be born, a man has to be born again of the water and the spirit. This is the only way to identify with God. We don't, we do not identify with God in our, in the flesh. He said, God is a spirit. And they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. You can't worship God in the flesh. Paul said the flesh is contrary to the spirit. It's warring against the spirit. You and I are not justifiable to God in the flesh. And the flesh is our human nature. That does not please God because sin and disobedience is synonymous with flesh. Flesh is enmity with God. The Bible says the carnal mind is enmity of God. The carnal mind is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be. Romans 8 6. So as long as we are in the flesh, we are enmity of God. We are hostile or we oppose God. In all our grandeur, in all our accomplishments, we are still hostile to God. Because we simply because we are not subject to Him. That's how Adam and Eve did. They disobeyed. And we're disobeying and think we're going to the same place they got put out of. Wrong. Wrong. They simply disobeyed. He said, the day you eat of that fruit, you're going to die. This is why we die now, because of sin. Disobedient. Other than that, they were they they would have never seen corruption. They listen. This is how powerful God is. They were stark naked, buck naked, no shame, nothing. But they ate that fruit, they went to eat. How many of you hide when you do wrong? <laughs> don't, don't answer me. Because sin, because sin is the law of death. That conviction comes over you. Don't play with this thing. God is not playing with this thing. Get you a ministry that teaches the truth. So you so you can get eternal life. Hey, they went and hid themselves. The Lord said, Who told me you were that? He knew that they ate their the fruit. They died right then. Now, guess this. Every other thing in creation, every other thing in creation is still in their created state. Dogs don't wear clothes. Cats don't wear clothes. Horses don't wear clothes unless you put it on. They don't wear it. But we are the only ones that are artificially covered. We're the only ones that are covered now. Because of sin. Here's what the Spirit is saying to the church. And, 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 and in this state, this is not pleasing to God because this is not what He created. We have, we have, we have fallen captain to the enemy. All right. <laughs> I, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. God is a spirit. The day that worship him has to worship him in spirit and in truth in order for you to be the son of God. Uh, but like I said, if, if the Lord is put it on your heart, bless you, you want to give the ministry. Uh, we thank you for your offer and revelation and gift. You can give the five new beginnings in the church of the Lord of California. So the Lord will bless your generosity and your generosity. You don't have no gifts and tricks. We ain't gonna lie to you. I'm guaranteeing you. Plus today, the 21st, if you send $721.21, the Lord will bless you. Stop following all that stuff. 
keep a line to y'all, got a ticket, y'all. The power of God is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power to your salvation and my salvation is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Other than that, everything on this earth will be dissolved forever and ever. That's right. The Bible says the dead in Christ will rise from us. Those of us that are alive and remain will be caught up, caught up to meet them in the air. He's not coming back. He's already came the first time. And he brought grace and truth. When he come back this next time, he's not coming down to the earth. He's, the Bible says he's coming back apart from sin. Yes. He's not coming down to the old kids all right now. No, he told you that now. Yes. Repent and fix it. Because when he comes next time, he's going to stop it up there. And if you don't get caught up there, how you feel and what you thought, it's going to be a sad day down here, left behind. Yes. Because that's when that mark of the beast is going to be instituted in full effect. And you're going to have to take that. And if you don't take that, you ain't going to live too long. Because you can't buy, you can't sell, you can't eat, you can't do nothing. Understand it. Understand what salvation is. Salvation is the ultimate deliverance. Jesus did all of this. So the Bible said it like this, that we were not appointed unto that, but, but to obtain salvation. The Lord is going to come take us out of here. You and I, we just got to hold on a little longer. We got to go through a little more hard stuff. We got a little more hard shit. But our Redeemer lives and He's coming back. So we thank God for you, Facebook. Pray that you would uh, join us in the United States. Our Father's prayer. Those of us that are here, let us know. I thank you for your patience. Kept me too long. You didn't know that long. If 